Bonet. I'm an American percussionist and composer, and I teach at the University of North Florida here in Jacksonville. And this here is my good friend and associate, Shosky the English Bulldog. The piece that I was able to write for Third Coast, which is titled Bulldog, as you can imagine, is inspired by Shosky here. She has grown up around rhythm and percussion her whole life, so she's no stranger to drums and marimbas and vibraphones and, you know, cowbells, anything you can think of. And she has been known on occasion to play the on glocken and tambourine and other things herself. And everything she does is rhythmic. She lives and breathes rhythm. She always walks at the same pace. She drinks in consistent alternated patterns of 7-8 and 9-8, uh, which is rendered in the piece. And she really loves paradiddles for some reason. With the, the goal of the piece to be an energetic, thrummy uh, sort of quartet, I thought paradiddles would serve that purpose really well because I also really like them. While they're a simple rudiment, they're really versatile because you can split up the hands and get uh, new groovy resulting patterns and do different variations. Um, and because Shasti likes paradiddles too, and I think of, you know, uh, her and I think that's fun, I, I thought that would be a good way to achieve that goal with, with the piece. Um, I'm like so honored to be able to write this piece for Third Coast and I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing them perform it. I know that they're going to kill it and I know that Shasti really appreciates the opportunity as well. Um, so we'd like to wish you a really happy summer and fall and a good rest of the year. Can you give me a high five, Shasti? Oh, that's a good girl. Say bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Andrea, for the cool piece, and thanks, Shasti, for the inspiration. Uh, thanks to all of you who are watching tonight for our digital TCP streaming concert. We're excited to have you here. This is our last streaming concert of the season. Um, this is our annual Currents concert. It's our opportunity to share new things with all of you. We've got a bunch of premieres tonight, um, a little bit of music that's just new to us, but almost everything is new to the world. So we're very excited to share this music with you. Uh, as always, we ask it with our other uh, digital TCP concerts that if you're watching right now, you think about what you might have paid to see a concert like this live in person. And you can visit us at thirdcoastpercussion.com slash donate anytime during the show or after the show donate the price of your ticket and help us keep doing this um we're very excited that we are beginning to do some live in-person shows again uh but we are also really happy about the the digital capacities we've built up in the last year and we're going to keep doing digital programming as well moving forward so you can help us to do that um as I mentioned, this is our current concert. This is our opportunity to try out new music, try out some new ideas, and explore some things. Uh, that first piece, Bulldog by Andrea Vinay, was a premiere tonight. We have two more premieres coming up by uh, folks from our current creative partnership program, as well as another really uh, fantastic piece for marimbas that we are excited to share with you all by New Kabi Karaoke. Uh, but first, uh, we have a piece that I wrote. Uh, um, it was uh, a great joy for me to be able to explore some musical things that I was excited to check out and um, and write this piece. There were a couple ideas I really wanted to play with. One was just the idea of like musical form, of like the structure of a piece and how that uh, affects like its meaning. Um, I always really like it in movies or TV shows or books when there's like a, a really specific kind of way that it's laid out like groundhog day the movie classic comedy the just the way that movie structured uh it tells a completely different story just because of the the way the events go and um this piece has maybe a little bit of a groundhog day kind of structure to it as well um but before i even thought about that i was really excited about just getting together a lot of different sounds all the different sounds we have but all pitched to the same note so a lot of what dave and Sean are doing this piece is a collection of all sorts of different instruments and found objects that all have the same pitch in the piece. So um, I'm super lucky to get to compose for these guys. A big uh, thanks to Sean, Dave, and Peter um, for playing this piece and to Colin for, for making this awesome video with us and also um, to all the guys for helping me sort of develop it and do workshops as we we're figuring out the piece. So uh, here is my new piece called Hence the Term Well-Adjusted.
Thanks so much for that piece, Rob. I've got to say, being part of a group where your friends and bandmates are also music creators and composers makes every day coming into work uh, be super exciting. That was so fun to to realize that uh, piece of Rob's. Uh, hope you're enjoying the concert tonight. If you are liking what you're hearing, please consider visiting this link below and donating the price of a ticket. Uh, if you were to see this concert in person, just consider how much you would pay and uh, donate that to Third Coast Percussion because it helps support uh, the creation of new works, which is what you're seeing tonight. If you have any questions for the composers or any ensemble members, drop them in the chat. We're going to have a live Q&A at the end of tonight's concert. And we have at least all three of the composers who have uh, have uh, already had works tonight. Um, I guess uh, just Rob and Andre, but I saw Niakave on the chat before. Hi, Niakave. Um, if you have any comments for the composers, drop them in the chat too. Or email them to info at thirdcoastpercussion.com and we'll answer your questions live on air later in tonight's performance. Tonight's concert is our annual Currents concert, which is something that I look forward to every year because it's a chance for us at Third Coast Percussion to just try stuff that is completely new for us. Everything on tonight's concert is new. Um, we have four world premieres and Niakabi's Trio is new for us too, even though it's been performed before. Tonight, we're going to actually perform it live in the studio here for you um, in the first time that the piece has been performed live. Uh, but before we get to that, we're going to share with you uh, a piece that was uh, formed through our current creative partnership, one of two of those pieces on the program tonight. That program, the Currents Creative Partnership, is something that we're really proud of here at Third Coast Percussion. It, we've been running it for almost 10 years now, and it is a free-to-apply-to program for music creators who are at either the beginning of their career or maybe have never composed for percussion before or maybe just want to try something new or want to want to push their art in a new direction. And it's an opportunity for folks to send us examples of their music, and then we'll workshop with them over the course of an entire season, three workshops in typical years in person here in Chicago. And then we will premiere the work on a Chicago season concert. Obviously, this year was out of the ordinary, as was last year too. So we didn't get to premiere two of our current creative partnership pieces, but we're going to share them with you online tonight. The first of which is a new piece by Hunter Ewan. So in just a little bit, we'll come back live in the studio for a performance of Niakabi Karyuki's Marmba Trio. But first, we're going to premiere uh, Hunter Ewan's new piece. And here's Hunter to give you an introduction. Hi, everybody. My name is Hunter Ewan, and I wrote this percussion quartet, Narratology. Uh, it's a little existential and deeply personal and deals with ideas of creative ambiguity, clarity of expression, and personal autonomy. Uh, I collaborated with vocalist Loria Mott on this piece, but as you'll see, she's not on stage with the others. I've been wrestling with issues of personhood, critical voice, and self-expression, and I thought a nice way to symbolize the isolation and lack of personal autonomy we all sometimes feel was with her voice as our disembodied pre-recorded narrator who interacts with the percussionist throughout. The difficulty or challenge in performing this piece comes from the hyper-coordination of the percussionists with the spoken text. Every word, syllable, inflection, microtiming is coordinated with the ensemble who have to keep playing together despite complicated gestures and a fluctuating tempo that changes every seven or eight seconds. The overall effect is to replace the fuzzy aesthetic of music with the clarity and uniformity of spoken language. And in doing that, to explore how we speak to each other, how we use ambiguity as a rhetorical device, and how hard it is sometimes to have an authentic human conversation.
Hello. Oh, don't worry, it's not blood. It's paint. I picked it out myself. Actually, it's not paint. It's a projection of a video of something. But look how drippy it is. Actually, didn't pick it out myself. I am just a recording. <laughs> I can't take anything now. Can I even have an opinion? Are these my thoughts? Are those my hands? Does it matter? What are we doing here? What am I doing here? Am I a performer? Do I count? I mean, I'm not on stage, but there are a lot of people not on stage right now. The person who designed the lighting, not on stage, and made these instruments, not on stage, and built the stage, not on stage, and the roof, and the plumbing, and the chairs, and the ceiling, and the person who developed the alloy that makes the nails that keeps the floor from squeaking, and the woman who gave birth to the person who designed the patterns for the performer's socks. Are they all part of this too? How many people are connected to it? Hundreds? Thousands of us? That makes me feel oddly insignificant. <laughs> Actually, I don't feel that way. The composer told me to say that. It's a line in my script, a talking point. My feelings are fake, but they seem real. Maybe that's good enough. Maybe I'm good enough. the narrator, and then she thought long and hard about her role as the mouthpiece of the group, and about her complete inability to affect anything. She was stuck on a track, a loop, a predetermined destiny, her soul reduced to an audio file playing from a computer somewhere off stage, ones and zeros. Hmm. script said to wait and to pretend to think, and so for the rest of the phrase, unable to hear the melody or see the audience, she waited and quietly ceased. And 
Then she continued. I feel fuzzy being here or not here. I mean, this is weird, right? Like I'm being a little too candid. Maybe I should be more subtle, more restrained. That's how music normally works, right? If this was rock and roll, I'd have to be more meticulous. I'd think about how much I love you. Maybe this is why nobody can get along anymore. Maybe that's the bigger lie. That we'll go along with just about anything as long as we feel like the good guys, the winners, the home team. And anyone who disagrees must be hypnotized by language designed to rip our society apart. Dog whistles, sensationalism, and fear-mongering makes the other incomprehensible. One side communicates with A's, B's, C's. The other uses blobs of paint that sometimes look like blood. So how can you have a conversation with someone when they're speaking a different language? How can you have a conversation with someone when they're reading someone else's words? How can you have a conversation with someone when they're telling someone else's story? How can you have a conversation with someone when they just repeat talking points? How can you have a conversation with someone when they're stuck in a loop? How can you have a conversation with someone when they're stuck in a loop? How can you have a conversation with someone when they're stuck in a loop? And how you, can you can have a get conversation out. with someone when they're stuck in a loop? And they don't have a conversation with someone when they're stuck in a loop.
underappreciated. I feel... I, I feel love. I feel hopeful. I feel elegant. I feel uncomfortable. I feel scared sometimes. I feel... I, I feel terrified that we're going to start hating each other and disowning each other and killing each other if I can't learn to speak your language. The world is designed to make us think wrong, and good enough, and not enough, and the hero, and the victim. But I don't want to be made to think anything. Weaponized ambiguity matters. Language matters. We matter. We all count. Millions, billions of us. I know I'm just an audiophile, but I want to have a real conversation with as much honesty and humility as we can muster. No tricks, no villains, no ambiguity. Just you harmonizing your ABCs with my blobs of pain, connecting my words with your rhythm. We have to try, even though we're exhausted because the alternative is alarming and the consequences are grim. I'm not really sure what the way forward is, but don't worry, it's not. Hello, my name is Nokabi Karyuki, and I'm a Kenyan composer currently based in the United States. And I'm thrilled to be introducing this piece and very grateful to Third Coast Percussion for bringing it to life. My piece is called A Season of Big Rain, or in its Kikuyu name, Burejahi, which refers to the season of heavy rainfall that takes place between the months of April and July in Kenya that allows for the beans to grow. My ethnic group, the Kikuyu, are farmers, and so seasons are based on that cycle of planting and harvest. Um, and something that came up very frequently to mind while I was writing this piece was that nostalgia for home, that nostalgia for the sound of raindrops tapping on our roof um, in my father's hometown, Kirinyaga, um, which is at the foot of Mount Kenya. And that's where he grew up uh, with his siblings. Um, it's one of my most favorite places to be, so yeah, there's a lot of nostalgia in the piece for that. Um, as you're listening, try and see if you can hear the sounds of the glimmer of lightning and the low rumbles of thunder, as well as that sound of rain tapping on a rooftop somewhere on the foot of Mount Kenya. I hope you enjoy it.
Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning into tonight's performance. Uh, this is our Currents program, and believe it or not, this is our last live stream uh, of the season. Uh, you all, our audience, you have been tremendous uh, this past year. Thanks uh, for tuning in not only to tonight's live stream, but to so many other live streams uh, that we've been doing from right here in our studio in Chicago for the past 15 months, if you can believe that. What a crazy ride it has been. Uh, I'm so excited for uh, this last piece that we have on the program that we're going to get to in a minute. Um, before we do that, though, I'm going to use a little bit of my time on the camera uh, to ask one last time uh, for if you have the means to consider making a small donation to Third Coast Percussion. Um, as you all know, with all of these live streams that we've been doing, none of them have been behind a paywall. Uh, we want anybody and everybody to be able to come and uh, join us with these li in these live streams and experience some of this new music that we have to offer. Uh, so instead of being behind a paywall, what we've been doing is asking all of you to consider what you might have paid uh, to go see a concert like this uh, at a venue in your own area and um, uh, consider making a donation in the amount of that ticket price. So if you have the means, uh, please do make a donation to Third Coast Percussion. There's a lot of easy ways to make that donation. You can do it via our website, and that is at thirdcoastpercussion.com slash donate. If you want a really easy way to do it, you can actually just Venmo us your donation, uh, and the handle for that Venmo is at Third Coast Percussion. Thank you so much, everybody, for your support tonight, for your support over the past 15 months. Awesome. Uh, I'm so excited about this next piece. Uh, uh, I'm going to turn it over to our good friend and composer, Andy Scordis, to tell you a little bit more about it. Hello, everyone. I am Andy Scordis, a composer from Nicosia, Cyprus, currently based in Amsterdam and Athens. I composed the Rin last year uh, after going through a, having a personal experience, the personal experience of uh, doing an MRI. And uh, this experience created the inspiration and thoughts regarding the piece. As many of you might, have, might know already, uh, when doing an MRI, you go inside a tube and then you are locked inside yourself, listening to, listening to all these crazy sounds and then waiting basically to get out with, a, with an ambition of having good results. And I created a piece which is in two movements, where the first movement, the, the percussionists are all um, spaced around the bass drum that also represents our brain or ourself, let's say. And they are part, all, all part of a single entity and they, they initiate a kind of ritual that they're trying to, to get inside this bass drum or inside their, their selves. And the second movement is when they are already inside there and then they're trying to get out. Uh, this experience was very inspiring for me and at the same time working with third coast percussion was even more inspiring I would say. I felt that I, I could work with people that were that could create music based on my ideas and had amazing uh, energy and uh, skill and we had an amazing feedback of developing things together and discovering sounds and going through the workshop at the time where we could travel because of there were no uh, regulations by COVID. So discovering the instruments they had that uh, I found also co that were connecting with my past since I had studied in Indonesia and I, am, I, was, I have always been fascinated by Asian music in general. As a result, Rin came out and uh, I would like again to thank Third Coast Percussion Group for uh, making it so beautiful and making music with what I wrote on paper. So I hope you enjoy. Bye bye.
Thanks everyone so much for tuning in. Wow, that was Rin by Andis Scordis. Um, such a cool piece, such a fun way to end the night um, and actually to end our whole season. That's the last piece that we'll present uh, on this uh, strange and sometimes scary and sometimes wonderful concert season. Um, Thank you all so much for being here. Thanks for sticking with us. This was a long program, but uh, so much fun and cool music to share with you all. Um, as promised, uh, we've been taking questions all night. There's some great ones I want to get to. Um, but I want to say thank you, first of all, to everyone who's uh, been able to donate a ticket price uh, tonight. It's hugely helpful for us. Uh, it helps us to end the season uh, in a good way and to uh, propel us forward as we start opening back up and um, performing live shows again. Uh, and I also wanted to say that um, this isn't like our last live stream ever. Um, we uh, have loved connecting with audiences in this way. Of course, we're very eager to get back um, to live shows, live audiences. Um, uh, but we, though we don't have any specific plans yet, um, we, we love this format and we intend to do hopefully a couple of live stream shows a year so we can continue to, to uh, see everybody who we don't get to see on tour. Uh, so now, uh, let's get to a couple of these questions. Um, Isabella F. asked, uh, what does pulling the string do with the drum? This was an Andy's piece. Um, and I've actually got a few props here so I can show you exactly what it does. This instrument is called a lion's roar. Um, and it's an instrument that, uh, as far as I know, was developed uh, for Foley uh, uh, purposes and Foley is like essentially creating sound effects for like radio plays or early movies um, using you know objects that are in real life but that are that are emulating something that they're not so uh, this instrument is meant to emulate the sound of a lion like growling or whatnot and it is Tom Tom with a string in it there's a knot on the other end of this string so I can't pull the string all the way through um, and when I pull on the string with a, with a damp cloth, it makes that totally wild and cool sound. We were actually on tour once um, and playing in the Los Angeles area. This was like 10 years ago. And uh, when we go on tour, we don't bring all the big instruments with us. We bring small instruments, things that are really particular to us. But marimbas, drums, we ask... Uh, uh, the folks who are hosting us to provide those for us. And we had a program that involved a few lion's roars and they showed up and they were huge and clearly very old. They sounded amazing, but we didn't know what they were and we were trying to figure it out. And then when the, when the company that owned them came to pick them up, they said they were called ape roars. Um, and the story they told us is that they were actually used in the planet of the ape movies. Um, so fun little third coast tour story. Um, there was another question about, the bowl, this is all the way back in Rob's piece. Um, Sean and I were playing these like small objects on a table, and I had a bowl that had something in it that looked like a box, but it was actually a piece of foam. So this is a piece of foam like you would use uh, under your mattress. Um, and uh, the reason that we use it is to make the sound a little bit shorter. So as a musician, you're always kind of thinking about the basic uh, sound that you're making. Is it high? Pitch? Is it a low pitch? Is it loud? Is it quiet? Does it ring a long time? Is it a short sound? And in Rob's piece, it made sense for this to be a shorter sound. Without the foam, it sounds like this. It rings for quite a bit of time. And with the foam, it sounds like this. So it's the exact same uh, pitch, the exact same like high, high, low frequency. Um, but the uh, Duration of the sound is really, really short as opposed to uh, really resonant. We had another question about the bows that we were using in Andes' piece, that last piece that we played. Um, we sometimes use bass bows, like the type of bow that an upright bass player would use. Um, they work really well on vibraphone or marimba or cymbals or the things that we bow. 
But um, after using those for years and touring with them and they'll break because they're kind of a little bit fragile and they're, they don't fit really well into a stick bag, we found these. These are called Incredibos, um, which is spelled just how it sounds, Incredibo. Uh, this is the Omni Incredibo, and uh, you can actually have these made in whatever length you want. So we had them made 17 and a half inches in length, and the reason is they're almost the exact same length as one of our mallets. So we've got these bags that are designed to hold a whole bunch of these mallets and drumsticks, and now we have bows that are the exact same length, so we don't need to put the bows in some sort of special thing to carry them and keep them safe. We can put them into our stick and mallet bags. Um, they're like they're not real horse hair, like a real like a nice bow. Would like have horse hair, not a nice bow. You know, a nicer bow than this. I don't know, an expensive bow would have horse hair, but this has like a, a polymer uh, filament. So um, what that means for us is that they actually never break. Knock wood. Um, we've had these things for years, and I, there's never been a single hair that's broken on this bow. So for the string players out there, you know that that's pretty wild. Um, we had another question about the big box that Rob used in his piece. Um, this is an instrument that's referred to as a log drum, and it really is just a big wooden box. But what makes it special and what makes it sound amazing is as you can tell, the sides are a lighter colored wood, but on top there are uh, a darker wood, a hardwood, and hardwoods uh, are denser and they resonate, so they, they sort of can more easily sound like a note that you would play on a piano um, or like a, like a drum, like a really resonant sound. So this is the log drum that Sean used on that piece. And maybe you can see, but there's these two little ovals and if you play in the oval, it sounds really resonant and nice. But in Rob's piece, uh, he also asks us to play in other areas. Outside of those ovals, so he gets different sounds, more like kind of a noisy sound. So, lots of cool instrument questions. We had another question that was, um, who are some of the um, people who have been through the Current's creative partnership with us. Um, and so far, we have had, I believe, 14 composers uh, selected as part of that program, which is something we're really, really proud of. Um, uh, so um, I'll just list them all because they're all amazing. Ben Hiertman, uh, who uh, now is at Appalachian State teaching. Jonathan Pfeffer, amazing drummer and, and music creator. Danny Clay, um, really amazing um, musician and creator who's based in San Francisco, uh, Katie Young, who's teaching at Emory University, Jose Martinez, uh, who just got a job teaching, I think at uh, Colgate, can't remember, anyway, uh, Jose's uh, Colby, excuse me, Colby, one of those Coles, anyway, amazing, amazing uh, composer, Annika Sokolovsky, who's teaching in Pittsburgh, Timothy Colorado. Pay Colorado. <laughs> I'm like a year behind on everybody. <laughs> It's like there's been a pandemic and I've lost touch with people. Um, Tim Page, who I think is still teaching in Hong Kong. Great. Um, Ayana Woods, an amazing uh, music creator based here in Chicago, who actually has a concert online tomorrow night uh, with uh, our neighbors and really good friends, 8th Blackbird. So just under the floor that I'm standing on <laughs> is another rehearsal studio for 8th Blackbird. Amazing, amazing group. Um, uh uh, has been hosting a series of performances by um, mostly Chicago-based uh, incredible artists. And Ayana Woods has a concert tomorrow night live stream on that uh, series. So you should definitely check that out. Uh, Hunter Ewan, whose piece you saw premiere tonight. Amanda Fury, amazing composer. Robin Jacob, Andy Scordius, you saw his piece tonight. Ellery Saxel and George Hurd. We actually premiered their pieces live two nights ago at Constellation. Um, and you can still watch that concert if you go to Constellation's Facebook page. Really, really beautiful new pieces by them. <clears throat> and then we have a new uh, sort of class of CCP composers, two new composers who are just getting started with Machado Machiga, who is based in Portland. Um, he is, in addition to being a composer, an incredible um, improviser, uh, drummer, uh, sort of multi-instrumentalist, and Suzanne Kite who is not only a great music creator, but also 
really involved with artificial intelligence and um, all kinds of cool uh, different modes of expression. So uh, those are, that's what's coming for the current programs. We're very, very excited about that. Um, DJ Saturnia asks, uh, are you strictly composition or do you also perform improv? Good question. We do uh, primarily play um, uh, music that was composed ahead of time. <laughs> so, you know, largely working with other music creators, we do compose ourselves quite a bit uh, and we arrange music. Um, and every now and then we, we improvise when it sort of fits naturally into a project that we're doing. It's, it's a small percentage of what we do, but it's something that we really love. And frankly, we're still really learning a lot about. Every time we have a chance to do some improvisation, um, it's really, really good for us. We actually have a brand new album out just out a couple of years, uh, a couple months ago called Archetypes, which is us uh, collaborating with two uh, incredible Chicago musicians, Clarice Assad, Sergio Assad. Clarice and Sergio are much more, uh, they're also, you know, uh, performing composed music all the time, but they're really comfortable with improvisation. And so they asked us to improvise as part of that project. So we learned and grew through that project. Um, we really like the opportunity to, to give it a shot when we can. Olivia S. asks, for narratology, that was Hunter Ewan's piece with the, the narration, uh, do we have a click in our ears and did all the words get written first and then the parts for the ensemble? Really good questions. Yes, we did have a click in our ear. And what that, what that means, for those of you who haven't heard that term before, we were all wearing headphones that are discreet, but they're connected to little packs um, that are feeding us audio while we're playing. And what we're hearing in our ear is the narrator's voice and also a metronome that was custom made for that piece. And the, it's probably the most complicated click track that we've ever used because to get the music to line up with the spoken word, which is spoken in a really natural uh, way, it wasn't, it wasn't spoken to rhythm. The narrator spoke it and then the rhythm was set on top of it. And to make that work, the tempo changes every three to five seconds. Um, the meter changes almost every single measure. Uh, so it was actually incredibly complicated to line up uh, our playing with the voice, but a really, really cool and fun challenge. Um, and yeah, all the words were written first. Um, uh, and, then, and then the music was, was basically like finding the music in the words itself. Uh, so Sean playing the sort of vowel sounds and the sort of pitched sounds of speech and others of us playing like the sound or the sh sound or that kind of thing with different percussion instruments. So it's such a cool piece. I encourage you to watch it again if you enjoyed it because there's, there's so much there. Um, so such good questions. Let's see. Um, there was another question about that same piece I was just talking about, Hunter Ewan's piece, Narratology. Um, and the question was about the video art, which was, uh, which was kind of baked into the, to the presentation that we did tonight. Was the video art and editing for Hunter's piece done by the composer, or was that uh, collaborative between Hunter and us? And um, the answer is, is uh, that the, the visuals, the sort of colored bits, the blobs of paint uh, that uh, are at the beginning of the piece and appear throughout were um, Hunter um, I'm, I'm reading this from a response that I got from one of the other guys. Um, Hunter created all that video paint art uh, by himself in a shallow tub of water and a lighting array. And he did it in real time listening to uh, Laurie, the narrator's performance of the text. And then we took that, he sent that to us as a video file. And um, Colin, our amazing studio manager, captured our performance with multiple camera angles and edited all that together. And then Sean, my bandmate, took uh, the video of our performance and the video art that Hunter provided and uh, brought them together in collaboration with Hunter. And in fact, the, the subtitles for the piece, which are, of course, as you may have noticed, they're more creative than your sort of typical uh, subtitles. They're kind of a part of the performance. Tons of, of interesting artistic decisions made there. So Sean did a draft, sent it to Hunter. Hunter gave a lot of feedback. And then, uh, and then we came up with a sort of uh, finalized version of it. So, yeah, that, that piece was a really big project, but um, really, really, uh, you know, uh, 
cool and important and big sort of artistic statement for Hunter. So we're so happy to be a part of that. We've got just, I think, uh, let's see, do we have one more question? I'm going totally out of order, so I don't, I don't really know. Um, yeah, I think we've gotten to all of your questions. Thank you, thanks everybody so much uh, for joining us tonight. Um, and because it's the last concert of the season, uh, I'll just say it once again, a huge thank you to all of you for, for tuning in. Um, I know that if you're, if you're tuning in, it's just you in front of a laptop or your phone, or maybe you uh, sitting on the couch next to a loved one or a bulldog. Um, <laughs> but uh, it means the world to us to see that you're there um, and, uh, and sticking with us through this, through this really difficult time. And um, like I said, we'll be back on the live stream at some point and um, we'll absolutely see you uh, in a live concert sometime soon. Thanks. Have a great night. Thank you.